It's, um, there, I got so many things to talk about today. Um, so I'm just going to bring my guest on, Nick Wright, via the Coward Global Satellite Network. So before I get to something, I'm going to throw a theory out to you, which was an, another amazing theory, which should be documented by uh, acts of Congress. Let's start out with this. I have been critical of OBJ, but I said to start my show today, this is all about John Mara not having the guts in April to get a quarterback. Because Saquon Barkley changes stats, he doesn't change outcomes. Sam Darnold's changing outcomes. This is an ownership group in New York that now wants to blame Odell. Odell's the exact same guy pre-contract, post-contract. So for the, one of the few times, I'm in Odell Beckham Jr.'s corner. I know you know him. What's your takeaway? You're in New York in the mess which has have developed. I wish I had you on the show today, Colin, when I was parroting Jenna Wolf and Chris Carter and Eric Mangini, because I'm on man on an island on this one, but I agree with you entirely. I will actually take it a step further. This was not Odell's intention when he did the interview, but John Mara yesterday at those owners' meetings, deep down, was glad Odell did that interview. Here's why. Because if Odell hadn't said a mumbling word, then guess what? They're still one in five and those questions are about his quarterback those questions are about his new gm's offseason plan and those questions are about why the giants a team who did everything this offseason like they could win right now is the worst team in the nfl outside of maybe gruden's raiders if i am ranking issues with the new york giants number one's the offensive line despite paying over market value for Nate Solder. Number two is Eli Manning. Number three is a defense that costs a lot of money. That's bottom five in sacks and turnovers forced. Roughly number 14 is Odell doing an interview with a high <laughs> out of his mind Lil Wayne and Josina Anderson. Like it's just, so it's a lot easier though to blame the kid with the yellow hair. And as the great Bill James once said, bad teams have a terrible history of blaming their best player for their problems. The Giants got a lot of major problems. Odell headbutting a fan ain't one of them, assuming the fan has the cover on it. If not, that could have been a major disaster. So I'm going to throw this at you. Al Davis, for a long time, was a great owner. He was a league uh, voice. He was a challenger. He was an agitator. He ch people listened to Al Davis. He also played. Uh, he was also uh, he was a hands-on guy. Everything I just said to you is Jerry Jones. But as Al Davis aged, the Raiders went through a decade of irrelevance. They were on an island playing a different sport. Is it possible Jerry played a voice of the league, challenged the league, very much a meddler, very much thinks he knows more football than he does? Is it possible old Jerry is becoming old Al, that he doesn't want to ch be challenged by a coach, he doesn't want to change Jason Garrett. He's overly loyal. Al was to former Raiders. Jerry is to now Jason Garrett. There's a rumor yesterday that Jason Garrett's going to get a contract extension. Is it possible here, Nick, that the Raiders and the well, Cowboys owner are becoming the same guy? What I think is definitely true, I think the Al Davis comparison is a very good one, but one I hadn't considered before you just said it to me, so it hasn't fully kind of metastasized for me. But the, what I will tell you is this, the Dallas Cowboys head coach should be one of the top 10 jobs in sports. Not jobs in the NFL, jobs in sports. You have unlimited resources. The owner will always spend up to the cap. You, you're, an ex, you're a bonus free agent destination because you're on TV more more than anybody else, you're talked about more than anybody else, top of the line facilities. The only reason it wouldn't be where David Shaw leaves Stanford for, or it wouldn't be where Lincoln Riley leaves Oklahoma for, or it wouldn't be where Eric Bieniemy leaves Kansas City for, is because any coach that takes that job knows there's one staircase to my office and there's a back stairwell to the owner's office, and that's the one people are taking. Like, if Jerry Jones wants his fourth Super Bowl ring, I would imagine he would have to go about it the way he got his first three, which was 
empowering Jimmy Johnson. I know he wasn't there for the third, but it was his team. Because ever since he got rid of Jimmy, he's never fully empowered a coach. Yep. And so now you have a guy in Jason Garrett who has only two coaches in NFL history have coached as many games with as little success as Jason Garrett, and he might get a contract extension? That seems insane to me. When the owner says he'd pay the net worth of Guam in order to win one, I don't get it. <laughs> okay, so last, I don't think the NBA was trying to do this. We all know that KD won the divorce over Westbrook. He's got a better team. He's got the rings. He has a better, I mean, he's not eating dinner at Applebee's. It's Silicon Valley, new arena, better teammates. He won the divorce. He dumped yeah. his, he dumped. Yeah, I mean, he, yeah, Russ only gets, yeah, Russ only gets the kids on every fourth Saturday. He <laughs> lost his job. Easy. I get it. I understand. He's last night, on the side of the road. Last night. He won an MVP, I think. Yeah, uh -huh. last night. The league didn't intend to be mean-spirited. Uh -huh. But Westbrook had to watch the ring fitting for his ex who dumped him and upgraded. And I it just, and by the way, they were chatting two minutes into the game. I think the Westbrook KD resentment's real. I think Westbrook will always hate him. Of course it's real. Of course it's real. Because KD it, it represented himself as one thing. You the real MVP and Russ, I'm only crying because you didn't, you're didn't. you going to get one too. While he was flirting with the girl across the street, Draymond Green, plotting his exit. Of course that's resentment. Are you kidding me? And by the way, it, Colin, you, you know I love you. I have a great father, but if I didn't, you would be like the father I never had. <laughs> I love you. But I am... I'm going to hold your feet to the fire on this one. Yeah. Because in nine months, when KD does to Steph what he did to Russ, you going to hold it against Steph? Or are you going to say it's different? When he leaves all this accoutrement of Golden State to go to New York, yeah. if that happens, you going to hold it against Steph or is it going to be different? Well, it's not. I, my it, guess is you're going to say it's different. No, he's not leaving. It's NBA writers having eight months to create stories, and there's no way he's going to elevate LeBron James' legacy because in the next seven years, he's going to win four more titles, and he's going to be closer to LeBron than he's ever been, and he's not leaving that city, that state, that region, that arena and those teammates well well then do me a favor joy taylor show colin during the break then you need to reach out to Col to kevin's brother because kevin's brother on instagram last night on kevin's page after uh, the post about the game said 81 more games till we're gone out here so go so i mean 80 or he said 81 more games to fill it up before we leave his brother who he's close with and used to live with i mean you can we can follow these breadcrumbs about whether or not <laughs> kevin durant is permanent in golden state i'm following him and by the way i wouldn't hold it against him in fact if kevin durant left golden state that'd be the first great thing for the nba he's done in the last two years oh. he's done a lot of great things for kevin durant not too many great things for the league it'd be great if he goes to new york by the way, Kyrie could maybe join him, but that's another story. I'm just curious. Like, you can say Russ lost the divorce. Yes. Russ was loyal. Russ won an MVP. Russ got a hot new wife named Paul George, so he's <laughs> fine. Like, I, 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 I. I'm not going to jump in on you with this one, man. I'm just not. You're not going to get me. Okay, so I'm watching the uh, – I picked the Celtics to win the title. They're younger. I think they're deeper. They're healthier. They don't have – The title? Oh, yeah. God, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, I've already ordered my banner. The Warriors so, going to win 75 games, man. No, no, they're going to win 75 games. Okay, so anyway, the, the Sixers last night, I'm watching them. And for the next three years, Embiid and Simmons are going to get – clobbered by Boston. They're never going to win the East, and they're both superstars. And I'm going to make a prediction that Embiid, who's much more playful, fun, personality-driven, some would say the best player, is going to get fed up with Markel Fultz and Simmons because he'll pass out and neither can shoot. And Simmons will start resenting Embiid, who is more likable, Instagram, the media loves. Simmons is more reticent and quiet. And I don't think Embiid and Simmons is going to last. I think they're going to get their butt handed to them for three years by the Celtics. And I watch them last night, and I'm like, they're not built to beat Boston. And they're not going to – they're going to do a Shaq and Kobe without the titles. I don't think Embiid and Simmons last. Your takeaway as Boston clobbered them last night. 
Listen, Boston did clobber him last night despite Kyrie going two for 14. Markel Fultz being unplayable in the second half is a big problem. How thin Philadelphia is is a big problem. You've got Boston winning the title. Yeah. I don't even have Boston winning the I don't even have Boston winning the East this year. So we, we, I I can't foresee a future where Boston clobbers them for the next 3 years because by the end of the year when Philly plays Boston while Boston will have the much deeper roster, Philly will have the best two players in the series, Embiid and Simmons. Both those guys will be better than Kyrie, Tatum, or Hayward. In fact, both of those guys might already be better than Kyrie, Tatum, or Hayward. However, Boston's got the better coach. They got the deeper team. Your overall point, that Embiid and Simmons, there could be some friction. I think there is something there. You said Shaq and Kobe. I think the more the better example might be Shaq and Penny, two guys that we think it was just injury that derailed it, but that relationship was frayed before Penny's career was derailed due to injury. I think both Embiid and Simmons have best player in the league caliber potential. Yeah. How are they going to mesh? That, I think, is a real question. I think Philly's right right now, their biggest issue is they don't have enough shooting and they don't have enough depth, even though they have two of the best players in the league in Embiid and Simmons. First things first, Nick Wright, good talking to you. We disagree on virtually everything, but that was fun, Nick. And we, we now are on the same Odell Beckham side, which uh, we can rejoice in that. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, did, did, did I have to come over to your side for that, or did you join the correct <laughs> I side? Think I think I have briefly joined your side. Briefly joined Talk your side. Talk to you later, man. <laughs> uh, Nick Wright. See you, yeah. um, good stuff. Coming up next, uh, the NFL had to uh, release something yesterday. as a press release, and I think it's ridiculous, and I wish they'd stop doing it. And I'm going to double down on something I said. I love the NFL, but they keep releasing a statements on something, and I think they should stop, and I don't think anybody wants it, and that's coming up next. Football's back, and SeatGeek is the smartest, easiest way to get tickets for any game all year long, college or pro. You get the seats, best prices fully guaranteed. Doesn't matter if you're buying a gift, last-minute deal, planning a night out. Their design and make your ticket buying experience easy. They search multiple ticket sites and then grade every ticket based on value. So you know immediately on SeatGeek, can I afford it? Where's the seat at? Doesn't end with sports, concerts, comedy, theater, too. I've downloaded the SeatGeek app on my phone, used it multiple times. Best of all, my listeners get $20 off their first SeatGeek purchase. Download the SeatGeek app today. Enter the promo code HERD, H-E-R-D. That's the promo code H-E-R-D for $20 off your first SeatGeek purchase. Life's an event. They've got the ticket. SeatGeek takes you almost no time to download the app. Best prices, best seats, fully guaranteed. SeatGeek, code HERD. You didn't.